I'm doing 90% of the things I like to do anyway. Um, and the way I was living prior to this was tailor-made for uh, the challenges that it, it, it's, I'm facing in it. Hey, it's Greg here, MaritimeGardening.com, and uh, I'm hiding in the woods today because it's so windy I can't film out in the garden, but I, I thought I'd do a video with a kind of pleasing natural setting out in the nature and so on. Uh, I've been asked by a number of viewers to do a video speaking to you know how I'm doing, dealing with uh, the pandemic and the various uh, privations that are associated with that. Uh, specifically to talk about food security, uh, what to grow, and just a general theme of stress, anxiety, that sort of thing, uh, keeping your morale up in the uh, midst of the, uh, the social isolation and uh, you know just the various hardships that people are enduring um, as a result of the pandemic. And I, I can only speak to these things uh, from my point of view. Um, so uh, hopefully there's some useful information here in, in this little bit I'm gonna share with you. Uh, so, you know, in general, I, I'm lucky, my, both my wife and myself, we have good jobs and we're able to work from home and, and keep that all going. So financially, we're not uh, in any sort of, um, you know, real uh, uh, distress, at least at this point in time. Um, you know, for those that don't know, I don't, I do not support myself <laughs> on my YouTube channel. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that would be a desperate situation if I was doing that. <laughs> And I do make a bit of money off of YouTube, but not enough to support myself. <laughs> and if you're starting a YouTube channel to do that, uh, a lot of things got to go right for you. You better get like a lot of views. Certainly not as many views as I get. Um, anyway, so financially we're, we're fine. Um, uh, in terms of what we're doing, we're social distancing. We're following the directions of the health authority here. I live in Nova Scotia, Canada. We've been told to stay home. Uh, only leave your house if you have to to get you know food you know, essentials sort of essential trips and when you do that don't go out as a family one of you just goes out right minimize your contact with other people um, and if you do have to be in contact with other people stay six feet away all that sort of stuff that's what i'm doing i'm just following the directions that's what we've been told to do it makes sense to me so i'm following it um, in terms of uh, food security uh oh and i guess you should back up you know in general <laughs> you know being around my house um spending a lot of time with my family that's kind of what I like to do anyway so it, for me it's really not that much of a hardship my my favorite th I, I, there's two things I like doing fishing and being out in my garden actually the fishing season has been delayed so that's a bit of a pain but you know it's, it's not um, it's, it's a bit bearable right <laughs> it's a shame because there's a lake right back there but anyway fishing season is delayed so uh, there we are but I can I can get out in the yard I can do all the things I like to do uh, on my property I can spend lots of extra more time than normal with my kids and I get along pretty good with my wife so I mean it's, it's really uh, no big you know it's, for me anyway it's kind of what I usually do anyway I just get to do more of what I usually like to do so that, that's that's not a real hardship for me uh, I'm fortunate in that regard uh, in terms of food security and this was the um, uh, someone emailed me I think on Facebook um, and they said you know what are you doing? And I said, I'm not doing anything uh, different than I normally do. And he said, uh, you should do a video on that. <laughs> so <laughs> what do I mean when I say that? <clears throat> no, um, I've always, since I, since I became a home owner, since I began uh, paying down the mortgage of a home, and paying property tax on property, uh, I've always been of a mind that I should make that property work for me and I should try to get as much out of the land uh, as I can in terms of food. That's something, you know, you, you've got all these different expenses and the one expense item you can affect, um, you can't bring down the price of groceries. Um, groceries cost what they cost, but you can grow your own food. And if you do it, uh, certainly the way I do it, uh, you know, I get way more out of my garden than I put in monetarily. Always have, even before I had a YouTube channel. Uh, never made any sense to me any other way. Right, if you're spending more than the garden's giving back, well, why on earth are you gardening sort of thing, right? Um, so you grow your own, grow as much as you can, you grow as much as possible with the land that you own, the land that you have access to, and uh, with the time you have and the resources you have. Um, and for those, of, I know there's, I have viewers that just live in apartments and they don't have a 
piece of land. They don't have a property. Um, you know, I would say, you know, on the one hand, you know, get a plan together and try to get in yourself a situation where you can do that. Or if you know someone that has land that isn't using it, a grandmother, an aunt, an uncle, or maybe your parents, or whatever, that sort of situation. If you know someone that has land and they're just growing grass on it, like a lawn, and uh, they trust you and you have a good relationship with that person, put it a garden on that person's land. Especially if it's an older person, they, it's very likely they'll appreciate that and you know you share a bit with them and they'll be happy to have you around anyway. So I mean that, that's a solution for a person that um, is, does not own a home, does not own land, and is in, maybe is likely not to be in a position to own one anytime soon. I know there's lots of people like that. Um, and I certainly spent years in that situation myself. So I understand um, where you're coming from. Um, so grow as much of your own, but also, I mean, I don't grow all my own food here, right? Uh, there's four of us. I have a 2,500 square foot garden, maybe a little bit bigger. And, uh, you know, I did a, a podcast on this once. That piece of land there is only enough, that garden at that size is only enough to feed me in terms of my caloric need, the food I need for a year. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's enough growing there to keep me from starving to death for a year. That's it. If I had to live just off of that sort of thing, right? So um, I'd need a bigger garden if I was growing all the food for me, my wife, and two kids. I got a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old, so they eat a lot. And start, they're getting to that stage where they eat and eat and eat, and they, they, they can't seem to get enough into them, right? I was the same way as a kid. Uh, so when you do have to buy food, you buy in bulk, right? Buy large amounts of everything. Yes, it costs more in bulk, but when you, what you're paying per weight, per kilogram, per pound, you're paying a lower price usually when you buy in bulk. Um, and I guess to that effect, I mean, learn to cook your own food, learn to, um, you know, avoid buying the prepackaged food and that sort of stuff, but also learn to cook using the staple, that term, staple ingredients, right? Learn to make delicious meals using the basic things, carrots, potatoes, you know, flour, pasta, rice. Yeah, they're all starches, <laughs> but, uh, you know, beets. Th those are things that you can buy in large amounts at a relatively low price when you buy them in large. I'm always amazed in the grocery store and people buy onions in a little bag like that, right? And yeah, if you're living in an apartment, you got no place to store stuff, I don't really know. I mean, you only got so much room in your fridge, right? Um, but, you know, onions keep really well. You can buy a large bag of them. <laughs> you can save a lot of money. You can get really good onions and get a lot of them for a better price. Anyway, getting off on a tangent here. You buy in bulk and buy a lot of the staple basic ingredients and learn to make good meals using those things and you'll save a lot of money. So I've always done that. So I, our grocery bill hasn't changed at all. We've always bought in bulk. We always have a lot of food kicking around. We have, always have a lot of dried uh, legumes, you know, lentils, beans, things like that. I will always have a lot of rice. We always have, I'm still eating my food from last year's garden, in fact. I mean, it's the first week of April here. Uh, I think yesterday we ate uh, potatoes from last year's garden. I just took some, uh, some squash out. Um, I, I had squash in storage, but it started going bad, so I just processed it all and, and cooked and froze it. So I think for um, you know Easter dinner sort of thing, we're going to cook some of the squash. Um, you know, whenever you see something on sale in the grocery store, you buy that. And it's always good to have a deep freeze. So, I mean, when I'm saying I'm doing the same thing I've always done, we always have a, a lot of stored food on hand. We always have done that. Um, so this situation is no different for us. Um, and also, uh, yeah, just learning to, to cook. But this, this sort of thing always made sense. It always made sense to me. And I, I wasn't a prepper. I, I, I was never doing these things to, prayer, to prepare for some inevitable collapse of uh, modern society. I mean, if, if that happens, uh, the fact that I got a little bit of extra rice probably isn't gonna matter much because there's gonna be no dentists, no doctors, you know. Uh, <laughs> I got the kind of, I've always had problems with my teeth, so without a dentist, I'm, I'm not going to last very long. So, <laughs> you know, I need, I need civilization sort of thing, right? So I'm not preparing for that. It was just a matter of, it always made sense to me from an economic point of view, from a, in terms of a quest for financial security in life, right? Um, I spent a good deal of my life living at or below the poverty line. Um, I got my first real good paying proper job. Um, 2003 and at that point in time I had a you know good amount of debt $26,000 coming coming out of um, university which by today's standard is peanuts uh, I think most Millennials are coming out with 50 grand or more in debt and up and up and up sort of thing 
Um, but certainly for my uh, cohort, uh, 26 grand was uh, uh, higher than normal, I guess, sort of thing. Um, you know, so uh, it always made, as soon as I bought a house and I had a piece of land, I was keenly aware that in addition to my student loan, I'd just taken on a mortgage, which is debt. I've, I've always been amazed that we use this term mortgage. It's debt, right? Or when you buy a car and you finance the car, you're just going into debt. <laughs> Unless you can pay for that car cash, and they say, oh, I'm gonna work on a financing deal. It means going into debt. When you get a mortgage and you buy a house, you're going into debt. This house I bought when I got it, I went quarter million dollars in debt when I bought this house. <laughs> Right, so I got that. Well, if you're in debt, then for me, um, you it should put you in a kind of survival mode. <laughs> not desperate, not stressful or anything like that, but just thinking about how much money is going in, how much is going out. Um, you know, how long is it going to take me to pay that off? And uh, how much interest am I going to pay on that debt? And my God, what if the market changes and interest rates increase? Can I handle that? You know, interest, you know, when we bought our house, interest rates were really good. But they don't always stay the same. When I was a kid back in the 80s, they went you know, right through the roof sort of thing for a certain period of time. Some people were ruined. Um, so, you know, I've always been of a mind, uh, since I became like an adult, let's say that started in my 30s. I was crazy in my 20s and 30s sort of thing. Uh, you know, try to get out of debt, avoid unnecessary expenses. Uh, we don't take a lot of trips, we don't do a lot of stuff because we're still in debt, we're trying to get out of debt, right? Um, so having a large garden for me was one very um, constructive way to deal with the fact that we had this debt that we had to get out of because I could literally turn my lawn into food um, and I could get exercise while doing it so I could, you know, avoid a gym. I always kind of try to keep myself in shape when my wife went, met me, I lived in an apartment. I went to the gym all the time and did squats and did all that sort of stuff. You know, as soon as I got a garden, I never went to the gym again. Um, I get all the exercise I need back here. I always, I mean, just like a kid, when you, your parents tell you go outside, find something to do. <laughs> That's kind of my attitude. Um, so anyway, getting off on a tangent here. Grow as much food as you can in your land. That's always been my motto because it makes so much sense financially. And it makes sense now as well. But it, it always made sense. It just... I think a lot of people might be coming around to that notion now. Um, be, you know, for various reasons, whether you're uh, concerned that uh, the price of food may go up too high, or maybe you're just concerned that the, you, the things you like the most may become uh, less available. Maybe you like uh, some kind of kale or some sort of uh, lettuce or w whatever it is. Maybe you're concerned that, uh, you know, it'll be like World War II in England. You'd be living off of turnips and stuff like that. Well, turnips are still kind of nice, but but anyway, you may be concerned about that sort of thing. Maybe it's just you've got all kinds of money, but you, <laughs> you're just worried you can't uh, get the things you like and you're going to try to grow them. Um, and if you're in that boat, I would say manage your expectations. I mean, it may be the case that you've got excellent conditions and excellent soil and everything works out for you, or it may be that you have to overcome a bit of a learning curve if you've got nothing and you're going to start gardening for the first time. Uh, you know, give it a go and see what happens, right? Uh, anyway, what to grow. Um, the advice I'm giving you right now is, is if you already have a garden. You may have been growing um, things that really you can't live off of but taste good, you know, peppers and tomatoes and some things like that. So you've got a space already prepared, but you're thinking, my goodness, like food's getting really expensive. Um, you know, I need to feed myself using this space now, okay? Uh, if that's not the case and you don't have a space prepared and you you basically got a lawn I've got lots of videos on how to turn your lawn into a garden how to turn a weed patch or just a bare patch of earth into a garden There's lots of different approaches to do it um, If you're in reasonably good health, I recommend the hugelkultur approach just do a search maritime gardening hugelkultur I've got lots of videos on that. In fact, it's, it's one of my most viewed videos So I'm pretty sure a good deal of you watching the first video I ever saw of mine was me making a hugelkultur garden, but um, anyway, uh, to that effect, I would, uh, you know, start, sm you can only do so much in a year, right? So maybe, f when I say bed, I mean like a four by eight space, maybe four or six of those this year, 
right? I, I tend to, you know, that's about the limit of what I'm able, if you're going to start right now, unless you've got an incredible amount of energy and you've got all kinds of time and you're young and you've got all this vitality and so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, man, you know, four to six beds for this season. And then next year, you know, depending on how well it went, maybe you want to make it, you know, double that. It depends on how much space you have and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so assuming you have that space right now or you're, have the energy to get it all together and this is the time to get at it right now you know um, then I would focus and as I've said this in other videos before a focus on the calorie crops I always do at least half my garden I'd say the space is devoted to growing calorie crops so what do I mean when I say that that's you know food that um, has a good deal of energy in, in it relative to its weight also, you know, growing calories, I mean, this all is relative to where you are, where you're located. Certain things grow well in certain places. Um, so, um, for me, a good calorie, calorie crop is a food that grows well where you are, is easy to grow, maintenance-free, or relatively maintenance-free, and stores easily, is easy to store, okay? Uh, and for me, easy to store means you're either sticking it somewhere that's reasonably cool, like a cold room, I just use my garage, um, or uh, you can freeze it. Uh, I do a bit of canning, but, but canning is way more work than just sticking something on a shelf, and it's more work than freezing stuff. I know lots of people do it, and lots of people love it, but um, there's m way more time, energy, and resources that go into canning. There's an energy cost. You have to boil water, you get vacuum seal, you gotta have all these different special jars, you gotta, there's an upfront expense in getting the right, the canning jars, all that stuff, right? So canning is, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to store food, but it's way more work than just sticking something on a shelf or putting something in a cardboard box or blanching and freezing stuff. You know, a good deal of my greens and green things uh, are stored that way. Uh, so calorie crops. For me, where I am, Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, and I'm, this is not an exhaustive list, okay, these are just suggestions, but I find potatoes, parsnips, carrots, turnip, you know, things like that, root vegetables, right? Um, Root vegetables that are easy to grow. I, I, I find parsnips and potatoes particularly easy to grow here. Same with carrots. Um, so there's a crop that you, you pull it out of the ground, you, you sort of dust it off, you arrange it in a cardboard box, you stick it on the floor in your garage if your garage is... Uh, I have a garage that's heated, but I keep the thermostat to zero. So all winter long, it's, it's just above zero sort of thing. You know, it's at like one or two sort of thing. It's the temperature of a refrigerator from about November onwards. So it's perfect for storing root vegetables. Uh, I find those things really easy to store. Uh, also, uh, another kind of what you might call a calorie crop would be uh, squash. You know, uh, anything in that category, winter squash, right? So the squash, I mean, in the summer you can grow your zucchini and things like that. But the things that store well are the winter squash, uh, acorn squash, butternut squash. There's a thousand different kinds of squash that are like that. They're called winter squash. Um, that's something literally you pick it and you stick it somewhere that's not too hot, not too cool, and it'll keep for months and months and months, and you can just, you know, prepare it and cook it. And even if the squash starts to get a couple spots and go off, you know, you can carve it out and, and cook it and freeze it still, right, and use it later. That's the squash I'm having uh, tomorrow for dinner. It's like I got like a one-quart container full of um, cooked and mashed squash that I just prepared when my, when my squash started going off. Um, Another good one uh, that you can grow a lot of that uh, I mean, is kind of a calorie crop, certainly if you save the seeds, but um, beans, right? Beans are really, there's, I don't think there's anything, the two easiest things to grow for me are beans and potatoes, and if you're a new gardener, grow lots of beans and potatoes. Uh, the potatoes are unbelievably easy to store, just pick them, dry them off, stick them in a box. And the beans, um, I mean, you can grow the kind of bean that you're, you're growing it to save the seed. That's a great food source, and it stores for a long time if you can get them dried out. Uh, but I grow all my beans as snap beans, green beans, right? So, you know, you just cut them up, blanch them for a minute in, in boiling salted water, spread them out on a cookie sheet, put them in the freezer, and uh, eat them when you need them. I'm still eating last year's green beans. I'm still eating last year's potatoes. Um, we just finished last year's parsnips, right? Uh, we're still eating last year's squash, right? I just ran out of last year's garlic, right? 
So, uh, and I'm going to plant a little bit more of all those things this year. Well, not all those things, but certainly garlic. Because I ran out. I shouldn't have run out of garlic. I need more, right? Um, and how much to plant is really up to you. But at least half my garden is, is devoted to those sorts of things. So, the calorie crops, right? Then you're going to want to grow some greens because they're just, they, they got a lot of vitamins in them. You know, greens for health is what I would say. You need the calorie crops for energy. There's all kinds of different... Uh, you know, theories about out there on diets and what you're supposed to eat and keto and all this sort of stuff. Um, I tend to follow the, you know, advice or the example uh, that's set before me by people uh, like my grandparents who both lived in their 90s and um, they ate potatoes, they ate parsnips, they ate carrots. Um, they were pretty healthy right up until the end sort of thing you know like they're nine once you're in your 90s you're lucky to be alive so I mean they weren't in the best of health at that point in time but I mean they were keeping a garden well into their 70s maybe even 80s sort of thing um, so I mean it worked for them I'm not gonna question it if I can make it into my 90s it's fine by me um, but I always grow lots of greens uh, they're, they're, they're easy to store I can store those in the freezer they tend to be ready a bit earlier than a lot of other things you know um, Spinach, certainly. I mean, spinach and lettuce are the first things that are available in my garden. Um, from a nutrition-wise, I think spinach packs a bit better of a punch than lettuce. Um, I wouldn't even grow lettuce. I would grow a little bit. My wife eats lettuce like every day. Um, so I grow lettuce for her. <laughs> right? For me, I think spinach is, uh, we get more bang for your buck with spinach, so I'd be growing more of that if it was up to me. And then eventually the kale comes on and the different greens uh, in that category, also uh, uh, Swiss chard and uh, beet greens and stuff like that. These are all traditional things that people have grown here. That's the thing, if you live somewhere, you, you know, talk to some of the older people. I mean, you, you can't just go to the coffee shop and talk to older people now, you have to do it online. But uh, anywhere in the world where you live, there are traditional things people grew. And they probably did it for a reason, because they grew well in that climate, they stored well, they worked well, that sort of thing. That's not to say you can't bend the rules and try other things, right? Um, so, calorie crops for energy, greens for health, and uh, some flavor vegetables, <laughs> flavor crops is what I would call them. Those things that you add to your healthy greens and your, your starchy, energy-rich uh, starches, you know, root crops, to make them taste better. You know, uh, they're aromatics like garlic. Um, I don't grow celery, but I grow uh, a plant called lovage, which is a kind of a perennial celery adds that celery flavor to food um, you know um, peppers and uh, you know the aromatics and tomatoes and these are all things that they add um, they add flavor they, they make your food more enjoyable to eat um, they're, they're not necessarily keeping you alive from a uh, you know giving you energy point of view Car tomatoes to some extent but really just not tomatoes mostly water right um, but they have a lot of vitamins, they got a lot of micronutrients and all that sort of stuff. I'm not a health expert, this is just what I've read, right? You can go, you know, confirm, <laughs> confirm or deny or, you know, uh, also you gotta grow things you like to eat. You know, if, if I'm saying, hey, I grow a lot of parsnips and you don't like parsnips, well, that's not very good advice. You know, w go with something that you like, you know, go with something that everybody in your household is going to eat a lot of. You're gonna get a lot more compliance <laughs> from your family members if you grow things people like. So, you know, there's certain things I, I like to eat that I don't grow as much of because um, I kind of have to, you know, fight with my kids to get them to eat it. So I just, I just don't bother fighting that. I just For some things, yes. I mean, they didn't used to like squash. Now they like it. I had to work with them on that sort of thing. You know, if you eat your squash, you get your pudding, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but Because uh, for me, it was worth it because squash is just so easy to grow. Uh, it's a pretty low-maintenance plant to grow, and you get, you know, huge bag of food sort of thing a huge bundle of energy out of a squash plant so it's worth it so yeah that's what to grow I think half your space should be calorie crops and then maybe uh, a quarter should be greens for health and then a quarter should be or maybe even slightly more than a quarter maybe two-thirds and then maybe one-third should be flavor vegetables things you know the herbs and uh, you know different sort of aromatics and um, I do grow a lot of um, you know I have five beds of garlic growing right now because um, for me that is the top shelf aromatic and every one of those garlic beds is going to have onions in it too eventually um, and I'll be planting those really soon because garlic and onions make everything taste good it's you know uh, 
cutting up an onion and you know getting a garlic going is basically step one for um, most really good meals one or the other or both of them sort of thing so they're an important element of the diet because they make everything taste better you know if you just got some you know if you just grow potatoes and that's all you got um, you know you, let's say you grow potatoes and you got a giant thing of um, multivitamins uh, you know you probably you, know, you probably live maybe but uh, you're not gonna be happy <laughs> right? you should enjoy your food right um, so there's that uh, now I'm talking about uh, stress and anxiety and depression you know the general category of morale because um, you know life has changed fundamentally for a lot of people we're spending way more time uh, in our homes with a handful of people we're not getting out as much we're not having that uh, sort of face-to-face -face contact with people we're not seeing our loved ones you can't hug people um, you know that is difficult and uh, I, I couldn't imagine being just stuck in an apartment by myself um, that would be extreme isolation that would be really tough um, now I, I should say that I, I don't have any sort of background in this sort of thing you know I, I took like an introductory psychology course back in 1992 and I got a C minus all right so take my advice with a grain of salt in that category and I'm also uh, thankfully not prone to um, you know anxiety depression these sorts of things and I, I feel really uh, I feel an incredible amount of um, uh, you know concern for people that struggle with that because this would be a really tough time to deal with it um, you know that said you know like you know I do experience stress right I do experience anxiety I do get you know a little bit down sometimes but it's not like I get a little bit down not way down sort of thing um, so speaking to that I find just getting outside the same advice you gave your kids go outside find something to do and don't come back till supper time <laughs> you know um, now for me that doesn't always work because I like to cook supper as well but I try to find something to do every day outside I just try to get out of the house and uh, you know if you're in an urban setting um, I don't really know what options you have available to you but if you have a property if you have a lawn there's always something you can do and I mean it's constructive time there's a hundred things that I've been putting off doing around here you know uh, I only have to be outside for a couple minutes so, oh yeah there's that thing well there's there's today you know yesterday um, I've, all, I've got a goldfish pond over here and uh, I've always thought it was too shallow not big enough and it had like two huge uh, trees growing out of it so I mean yesterday I spent oh a good four hours out here I pulled uh, these tree roots out and uh, I bailed all the water out of it and dug it a bit deeper and widened it by about 50 percent I was exhausted and I remember that morning yesterday morning I was on my computer I was re reading about COVID-19 I was you know just doing the usual kind of social media thing and I was just oh god this sucks you know it was probably around 9 30 or 10 o'clock in the morning I spent the whole morning in front of my computer and uh just said oh the heck with this you know I put on some dirty old pants and I get up like this and I went out and I said what can I do today and I was a bit windy for um, planting seeds in the garden that will just blow all over the place and you'll lose them sort of thing it's really windy here um, and I took I walked by the goldfish pond which by the way I'm <laughs> all the uh, everything I'm planting in my garden right now for those who have been following along I, I don't have my hoses hooked up because they still freeze this time of year um, I'm just getting water I have a bucket uh, with a string attached to it and I just throw it in my goldfish pond I'm fishing water out of the goldfish pond and using that to water everything uh, so anyway uh, I saw that and I said okay that's that's my project today <laughs> right <laughs> so um, yeah for me um, the garden uh, is just the uh, the ultimate reliever of stress um, if I go to work and have a long day at work there, there's nothing that brings me down levels evens me out um, better than just getting out in the garden and doing something and then you have the satisfaction of having accomplished something and you know that it's almost like putting money in the bank right you know that the thing you did in your garden is going to give you something back at some point in time you know you put in a bed of beets here I don't that's that's one more thing I had to do that it's done but I also know that in uh, September October November I'm gonna have these uh, delicious beets if I do everything right <laughs> right so it's it gives you something to anticipate it gives you just one more thing to look forward to right so when you're planting something in a garden you're, you're getting something done you're getting exercise you're using your body a little bit you're getting yourself tired so you don't stay up all night worrying because you're too tired right 
but you also have something to look forward to. You've, you've laid that, you've laid that out for yourself, right? So, uh, you know, that's, that's really all I got to say about that general topic. Um, you know, having a garden, being able to get out and just work with that, uh, is just such a, for me, it's just such a healthy, um, uh, resource for exercise, fresh air, uh, just uh, almost like a kind of passive meditation or whatever. Um, that's what I do, you know, other, other than fishing, which I'm, I'm pointing because there's a lake back here, but um, I mean, when I say back here, it's like a kilometer that way, right? But, um, you know, those are the things I do to unwind and relax. So the garden's way up on the list. Um, and also I can do things with my kids. I can have them out with me. I've got more time with them. Um, so, I mean, you know, really, how am I doing in the, in the in the face of the pandemic, how are we getting through it? I'm doing 90% of the things I like to do anyway. Um, and the way I was living prior to this was tailor-made for uh, the challenges that it, it, it's, I'm facing in it, right? Um, saving money, buying in bulk, growing as much of my own food as possible. I already spent a lot, a lot of time around, on the compound anyway, sort of thing around the house. I'm always looking for stuff to do out here. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, I think I've rambled on enough about that topic. I hope I've given enough to chew on there, and I hope I um, spoke to those topics um, thoroughly enough to give everyone some, uh, some uh, maybe some uh, a reason to be positive in light of all this. I hope so, anyway. So uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Get outside, find something to do. 